Hello, my name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today, I'm gonna give you some M Tracker 3D hints so that you can get the best quality track for your footage. All right, so first and foremost, when using M Tracker 3D, you want your source footage to match the frame rate of your timeline if you plan on doing any sort of tracking that isn't like slow motion or something like that. For instance, if you're using a clip that is 24 frames per second, you will want your timeline to be 24 frames per second. If you're using a clip that's 23.98, you want your timeline to be 23.98. Now, what if you're using a 60 frame per second clip in a 24 frames timeline? You'll wanna go into your retiming tools and click automatic speed so that you will conform those frames to match your timeline. So of course, it's gonna set that 60 frame per second clip to 40%. Then you apply M Tracker 3D, do your tracking, you'll be good to go. M Tracker 3D works off of tracking the depth in a scene. So the more the camera is moving, the more depth that you are able to perceive from the camera moving, the better your track is gonna be. So that actually means that you may have a better track with handheld footage than say a slow moving pan or tilt on a tripod. Now there are two types of tracking options in M Tracker 3D. One you'll notice is free and the other is tripod. So if you're on a tripod and you do a pan or a tilt, something like that, obviously go into the tripod setting and then do your track. But for anything else like a drone or gimbal shots or a handheld, go ahead and use that free movement when you're doing your tracking. All right, so like I said earlier, your camera movement is what M Tracker 3D is really focusing on. So if you have something in your scene that is also moving, let's say a car or a person that's really animated like me moving around, it's typically better to just go ahead and set a mask over that movement. If you need the keyframe or anything like that, that's fine. You don't have to be super precise with rotoscoping or anything, but you do wanna mask out any of that movement. I know that we've got some clips out there with tutorials showing some children running, and it was just a really quick mask keyframing over them so that M Tracker 3D is not perceiving them as camera movement and depth. So you want to mask those out, then do your tracking, then obviously turn your mask back off. All right, so you may be wondering, what if I want to track something in the same area that I have that mask set? No problem, just set that point as close as you can in that area and use your offset tools to offset those points in Z space, X and Y, so that you can get close to that masked area. Now, if you're doing that, remember you can hold a shift down and place your point and that's gonna give you the perfect X, Y and Z at zero parameters so that those offsets are easier to do. All right, so many of you may film in some sort of a flat or log setting that's totally fine and you want to track and maintain that log setting, no problem. What we suggest is go ahead and add contrast, saturation if you want to, to give as much detail to the video as possible, do your tracking, and then you can turn the contrast back off so that you can adjust that final look later. But M Tracker 3D works the best when you have high contrast. It may look terrible and that's okay, Add your contrast so you've got as much information in that clip as possible for the tracker to pick up on and then turn your contrast off. My next tip is to be intentional with the clip that you're going to track. While you're out filming, have M Tracker 3D in mind. I know that I'm gonna track this clip. Get your clip and make it honestly as short as you can so that you don't eat up time or data by tracking bits of information that you don't really need. So it's better to use shorter clips, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. I personally have tracked a clip that was well over a minute long and it worked, but of course it took a lot of time and it took a lot of data and sometimes you might not need that. So be intentional while you're out filming 
you know that you're using M Tracker 3D, you want your clip to be 10 to 15 seconds long, probably at the maximum, unless you have a real specific reason that you have a single clip lasting any longer than that. All right, our last tip, and this is a really good one. Sometimes you may be tracking something that you're revealing something in the scene. Say it's 3D text or something that you've added a 3D object in MO2 or a USDZ model in motion and you're revealing that. Sometimes it may be better to go in and reverse your clip, track it reversed so that your M Tracker 3D data is being built on the final placement and it's not having to search for it later. So obviously you may get different or even better results if you do that reverse tracking and then just go in, set everything up how you want it, compound clip and reverse it again and it will be forward, it will be revealing that beautifully and you'll be good to go. So once again, my name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com discussing tips on M Tracker 3D. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. We love to hear your feedback so that we can make these videos. We cater to you. So thank you again. Have fun with M Tracker 3D. It has been a blast to use, and we're so excited to see what you can create with it.